Public Wi-Fi is everywhere. Cafes, hotels, airports, public transport, you name it. But just how risky is it to connect to a network that is unprotected? Well, let's talk about it. Public Wi-Fi is a total lifesaver if you ever run out of mobile data while getting a coffee or when traveling outside of your own country. It's just so easy and obviously best of all, free. However, the positive impact of public Wi-Fi goes beyond than just providing you access to a cat video on the internet. For example, governments can provide better everyday services to their residents. People can use it to freely access government websites, hunt for employment, or gain real-time transport information to make travel experience better. It also positively affects tourism. People can check travel information, share their vacation photos on social media, and stay in touch with their family and friends while away. And lastly, educational institutions can use wireless education to enhance their study programs by offering free Wi-Fi to both the students and the faculty. I could go on and on and list even more things, but it's fair to say that I'm a big fan of the idea of free public Wi-Fi. But all these benefits will always lead to one question. How safe is free Wi-Fi? Well, you've probably seen a bunch of ads from VPN companies saying that free Wi-Fi just isn't secure. And sadly, that's true. Using public Wi-Fi is one of the simplest ways for anyone to track your internet activity and obtain your info. Now, if you ever looked closer at your phone or PC after connecting to your home Wi-Fi, you might have seen such abbreviations such as VPA, VPA2, or VPA3. All of these mean the same thing, Wi-Fi protected access. In other words, security protocols. VPA3 is the safest and VPA2 is also very secure, but can be hacked with effort and patience. Anyway, all these security protocols really go out the window when talking about public Wi-Fi since they don't have a password. And even if they do have a password, it's usually something simple that you can guess or ask just at the reception, find in a booklet or anywhere else. But now let's discuss the different ways a hacker could attack you via public Wi-Fi. One of the most common ways is actually through something called man in the middle or sometimes also known as network snooping attack. This one is really self-explanatory, so let's just visualize your device connecting to a public Wi-Fi. Your device forms a connection with the router or server connecting you to the internet. All good and well. But now, here's where a hacker could come in and use a complicated Python script with Linux OS to read the transmissions between your device and the website or service you're trying to access. Now, the hacker's journey to your data isn't as secure as one might assume. Most, but not all, websites on the internet use encryptions such as HTTP and HTTPS. If a website doesn't use HTTPS, then the hacker performing the attack can see everything, including your usernames, passwords, and even credit card info. As you can see, Chrome clearly points this out here in the address bar. That can result in a stolen account at best and financial fraud or blackmail at worst. Definitely something you don't wanna deal with. Another less common way hackers can attack you via public Wi-Fi is through malware injection. It is possible to infect connected devices with malware and send you fake pop-ups that demand you to update well-known software. And if you click it, you download malware. Depending on the malware, the hacker could potentially take confidential data, erase files, and render your device unusable. The last risk you need to know about is fake Wi-Fi hotspots. Again, this one is fairly simple yet easy to fall for. An attacker will basically set up a hotspot that is named just like the official restaurant or company would name their Wi-Fi. Say if you're going to Starbucks to grab a coffee, you might see two Wi-Fi networks. One might be named Starbucks Wi-Fi, the other one might be named Starbucks Public, which might sound similar, but one might be created by a hacker and the other one might be the real official Wi-Fi. Now, the one that is provided by the hacker could still provide you with internet access to make you think that it's normal, but you may not be aware that it's actually a fake one and that an attacker is out there hoping to catch you logging into your bank account or social media account. So with all of this in mind, should you even use public Wi-Fi? Well, like I mentioned earlier, hacking you over public Wi-Fi isn't as easy as someone would lead you to believe. Tech giants like Apple, Google, Microsoft, and many others have been making updates to make you safer online. For example, starting with Android 8, Google implemented randomized MAC addresses. A MAC address is used to identify your device. So each time you join a network, it will now be randomized, making hacking just a bit harder. 
Similar functionality also exists on the iPhone. But by far the biggest challenge for hackers is encryption. Most of the websites we use today have TLS encryption. That's HTTPS, the one we spoke about earlier. For example, Google Chrome displays a padlock in the address bar indicating that a website is encrypted. The popularity of VPNs also helped improve security as that adds yet another encryption and security layer. There's also additional steps and mindful things that you can do to protect yourself while using public Wi-Fi. The first one is to disable auto connect if you're running an older operating system such as Windows 7 or Android 5.0. Some older OSs tend to connect you to Wi-Fi networks if they don't have a password, which can of course result in you connecting to one of those untrusted networks. However, with modern systems like Android 13 or iOS 16, this shouldn't be a problem. Next simple yet effective tip is just to not share sensitive information while connected to public Wi-Fi. This is especially true if you're not using a VPN at that moment. Next tip for using public Wi-Fi securely is to create a throwaway email account. Now this one might sound just a bit over the top, but hear me out. Free Wi-Fi networks occasionally request your login information, such as an email. Typically, service providers collect user data before selling it to marketers. So it wouldn't hurt to set up a fake, unique email address just so you can use free public Wi-Fi securely. Finally, you can just ditch public Wi-Fi altogether and stick to using mobile data. But if you end up in a situation where you have to use free Wi-Fi, then, well, using a VPN is the best option. A VPN will encrypt your data no matter the network, so it's the easiest solution to protect yourself online. We also do have a link in the description below and a coupon called SharkTube, so you can use it to get a great deal for Surfshark VPN if you're interested. But that'll be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about public Wi-Fi. I'm sure that many of you have used it at some point of your lives. And go check out more of our videos right over here. But that'll be all for me. Take care.